Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Inflection Point Moment. We are really excited today because the person that's with me on the screen today is not the person you're used to seeing with me. <laughs> I am not Literally, Jeff. <laughs> this is not Jeff Hire Jones. This is my good friend, Teresa McCloy. Jeff is away celebrating a milestone birthday in the tropics. Do we feel sorry for him? No, we do not. But, and actually, I'm pretty excited for him. But Teresa has agreed to join me today because she's a planner person, but she's a very different kind of planner person than what Jeff and I are talking about in the annual planning process that we've started our um, series on. So that's why today's topic is titled, We Interrupt This Planning Process <laughs> or and you know, at that point, you hear that yeah. sound. We're interrupting it for living from rest, not rush. Teresa is an author, a speaker. She's the creator of the real life process, quite frankly, savior of my life from the standpoint of managing my time and mm -hmm. my priorities. And most importantly, she's a dear friend. We have... Um, We've traveled together. We got some stories, but we're not going to tell them today. We won't tell those today. No, we're not going to tell stories today. Because what we're here to talk about is the real life process and her new book that's out. And then we're actually going to wrap up with living from why living from rest, not rust. So, Teresa, is there anything I didn't introduce about you that you needed me to say? No, I think you covered it all. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be a part of the show. I've been watching you and Jeff build this out now for how long have you guys been doing this now? Um, by the time we actually finally got to actually go live, because that was a process in and of itself, <laughs> uh, it was March. So we March. Been yeah. So eight six months, months seven or so, months, six, seven, months, seven eight months. months. So I've been yeah. watching you do all this. I'm really excited to be here today. Excited for your listeners, your LinkedIn live people to, uh, yeah, just hear what we want to talk about. And I think what you shared, I live on a farm in central Illinois, Rhonda and I, uh, again, long story of how we became connected, but back in the day, Rhonda actually had a podcast and it was the first podcast I was ever on <laughs> as a guest. And so, yeah, we go back a, a few years uh, a few business transitions, I would say, um, yep. for both of us. And exactly. we just watched each other kind of build uh, the audiences that we have, the content that we have, and what we do. And we do it differently, but yet we have so many crossovers. So it's fun to be here today. That's, that's very true. And I want to uh, jump in here and remind people to please let us know you're here. Say hi in the chat. And if you have a question or a comment about anything we're talking about, feel free to type in. We can't type back to you, but we will respond back to you in our um, conversation. So if there's something you want to go, want to yes. talk more about, let us know. Please. I yes. love interactive conversation. So if you're out there and you're listening, or if you're listening later and you, I think, does LinkedIn work the same way as some of the other social medias where if they comment later, we can tag back with them? Do you have yes, that? Absolutely. Awesome. Oh, we have someone. Yes. I'm soaking yes, in the knowledge. Here. So we're thrilled you're here. So yeah, Yasmin is, an, is actually, Yasmin des, um, designed my website. So oh. she's a very important person in my life. We love awesome. Yasmin. We love the web designer people. Yes, we do. Especially because she, she, um, I can't remember the word exactly, but she um, does glitter on websites. So Glitter on websites. I didn't say it right, Yasmin. I'm sorry. You, if you want me to say it right, you're going to have to type it in. So you have, I to, say you it have to tell us the word. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, I'm ready. We can dive in. Let's go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Teresa, tell us about the real life process. Sure. I would love to. So uh, just a little backstory of the process and how it came to be. 
Um, in my own life, I often say I lived with my hair on fire. Now it's not why it became gray. That's a genetic thing. Not a, <laughs> my hair didn't burn off. Um, but it's just a word that I used to describe the pace of life that I was living in, uh, until about 10 years ago. And about 10 years ago, I just really had to say I can't live like this. This is not the way that I want to be. So through a whole long journey, I won't go into, you can read about it in the book. Um, but through a whole long journey that I went through, I had to say, yep, there's the book. How can I do this differently? And I am a person and the way my personality is wired is I need a plan. I need a process. I think most of us really do you know, at our core, uh, we're designed, I think, in our personalities to say, okay, here is step one, here's step two, here's step three. So I actually created a process for myself and defining, you know, what are the things that matter to me? And then now that I know that those things matter to me, these are the big rocks in my life. These are what we call areas of focus at the process. These things matter to me. Then if I want to grow, because I'm all about growth mindset and, and growing in those areas, then, you know, what am I going to actionably take steps on? So that's kind of the second part of our process. We call them real life action. And then the third part is how do I live that out in my everyday life? How do I put that into my calendar? So the things that are in my calendar actually are things that matter to me kind of ties back to the first part. I know it's so radical, but that's a whole part that, you know, as I became a coach, clients were always coming to me, you, me as they do to you of like, oh, my calendar is such a mess. I'm busy. And I'm like, well, what are you busy doing? Are they the things you want to be doing? How do you say yes and no to those things? And then the last part, which ties into kind of the subtitle of the book is um, how do I sustain this? How is this internally a part of who I am, not an external hair on fire? I have to get to the next thing. So visually, I often talk about the process of the real life process in two triangles. The first triangle, you know, work is at the top, life is in the middle, and our knowing of self is down here at the bottom. And it kind of wants to do this because it's about to fall over. But if we flip that triangle... And this goes into the planning part that you and Jeff are talking about. If we flip that to say, I want to design my life. I want my rule of life is sometimes what I call it. I want that to be foundationally from who I am and what I know about myself. And then I want to put that into my everyday life, the calendar part, the people that I care about, all of that. Then I'm going to work matters. What I do matters a lot, but foundationally it needs to set on top of the foundation of who you are and what you're doing and who you're doing it with. Nobody ever, you know, ends their life and says, gosh, I wished I would have worked more. No, they say my relationships matter. What I did in the world mattered. My generosity, how I gave back, how I connected with other people. That's what people say matters. But are we really living that? So that triangle now is a foundational base of real self, real life, real work. All three matter. It's just the order that we put them in and how we make decisions about planning, which is what y'all have been talking about, planning out our life. That feels so much more restful and it's so much more sustainable to look at it from that, that angle. So that's kind of the process in a nutshell. Absolutely. And that um, is such an important, but truly different way of thinking about how we plan our time. Because usually productivity is about how many things can I squeeze into one right. day of work? Right. And then the next day, it's the same thing. And making sure that we're meeting all the demands as opposed to saying, wait a minute, who am I? What are my priorities at this season and stage of my life? Because those things change over time. They absolutely matter. Mm -hmm. And what is the work that matters most for me? Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of, and as you guys have been talking about planning, and I think one of the most important things that looking at life this way brings us is 
it's not really about how much more we get done, but it's pre-deciding. That's a huge word for us at the process. Yep. And that matters to pers- a lot of personalities um, that the more you can pre-decide, the easier than it is to live out your pre-decisions. So if I can pre-decide that, you know, family matters to me, uh, my self-care, my soul care matters to me, my finances matter to me, my profession matters to me. Maybe your extended family, if you're in a season of life of taking care of parents, or maybe you just have family because you still have kids at home, but pre-deciding what those things are and then pre-deciding that, you know what, if I have five to seven areas of focus in my life, I really cannot manage all of those at the same time. (laughs) But in the next 90 days, what could I do? Around two or three of those. So your personality and my personality are both very forward moving types. So as we do this crazy forward thing, we actually believe very falsely that we could probably do all those things. We can have all the plates spinning in the air and coming to the realization that, you know what, if I just take a short amount of time, these next 90 days, and I um, just move forward in the next 90 days around these things, that's enough. And that will be enough. I think we got a little spammer going on there. Uh, We did. That is the first time we've had that experience. They're gone. Okay. They're gone. You got the, she kicked them out. They're out of here. So that was a weird one. So ignore those. But if we can just focus in the next 90 days on two or three of those areas, it doesn't mean that we forgot about all these others. We're just going to focus on two or three things in the next 90 days. So that, that, that in itself feels good. It's not about life balance. All the things have to be spinning. It's about harmony. It all belongs, but not everything has to get my top focus and energy uh, in the next two or three months. So I don't know how that fits in with the planning that you all are doing, but that's kind of the way I look at planning things out. Well, being that I am certified in the real life process, which actually this is the first time I've actually said this on the live stream. She um, is. She's a certified facilitator for us. So she uses this tool in the work she does as well. I do. This is very true. We are integrating it. It is not the central focus because Jeff took the um, lead on this planning process. I know. Hard as that is to believe. The integrator took the lead on the planning process. As he should. And absolutely. We are kind of bringing it in as we, as we discuss the different parts of it on the weeks when I have a voice and I can, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, but the areas of focus part is something that we're going to definitely be bringing in as we think about um, the next year, because what we're talking about is planning for the whole year. But as you know, we we plan in the real life process in 90 minute, 90 minute, no, no 90, 90 day, day increments. And I would say, Rhonda, so many times when I work with uh, businesses as, you know, when I'm doing some business coaching and things, most people do plan for the year. Yeah. And there is nothing wrong with that method or that methodology where I find it interesting is the areas of focus that we define, right? And uh, many of us would choose very similar five to seven to eight areas, but it is your real life process. So you get to choose your own areas. You get to name them because yours are different than mine. Everybody is different. Every client I work with gives them different language or names because that way you buy in. It's your life, not mine. Right. So, but those areas are the same. So when we talk about those areas, we actually say, okay, when I look out a year to 18 months, what do I want that area to look like? So there's your long-term planning right there in that part of the process that we teach. So if I'm talking about, say, um, my professional life, I'm saying, where do I want my business to be? And I'm writing that statement like it's happening. I was listening to uh, actually a friend of mine that I just met 
in the last month or two on a podcast. And I love what he said about how our brain works. Our brain can only like work towards something that it's already sees the end goal and the vision in. So for example, writing these statements saying, this is my goal. This is the, what I want this area of my life to be as a, I am doing this. I am leading a, you know, multiple six figure business. It's doing this amount of work. It's serving this many, whatever that is for you. Uh, right. I am moving into this position within my company and I'm doing this, or, you know, we would all write it differently depending on our profession or what circle we're working in, but writing as if it's happening, your brain goes, Oh, we're already doing that. And it believes that thought. Then you backfill in. That's the second part of the process, mm -hmm. the action steps in creating an action. What could I do in the next 90 days to get me there? So many times people think, oh, I don't believe in long-term goals. No, I actually do. It's in those original areas of focus in that first part of who am I being and what does that look like? Absolutely. And that brain, um, that brain science part of it, I actually witnessed that in real time with a client that we were working on is a focus and she had written it out as I'm going to, I want to. And when I had her flip that to, I am the, just even in that very moment, she's like, Oh my gosh, the difference that makes is so amazing. Yeah. It just makes it so much more real. It's like, um, and this coach I was actually listening to, and we have some of our certified facilitators who love to do this work too. It's like creating a mission or a vision board in a written no. form, right? It's like when, you know, you've heard of vision boards and go cut out the pictures of yourself and put your face on there or the trip that you want to take or, you know, the car that you want to drive <laughs> or the growth that you want to have, you know, spiritually or emotionally or uh, a goal of health that you want to do, visualize it. That's part of those areas of focus. And then let's plan and break that down to something we can actually do in the next 12 months. That That is planning at its greatest. Yeah. I don't love the word goal because to be honest, for me and my personality, I feel like, well, but what if I, what if I don't get it? What if I fail at it? So my personality goes into a false setting, but so we use the word projects. This is the project I'm working on, but those original areas of focus statement really are goal statements. That's what they are at their core. Right. Exactly. So tell us about writing the book. What motivated you? Actually, I kind of know a little bit of this story, but tell, tell our listeners. How? about what made you decide to write a book? Well, I think writing a book for me at least had to have a, a purpose behind it. What would be the end game of this book? I am an entrepreneur. I come from the business space. And so the book, it's an entrepreneurial book. It's a, you know, it, it's a, if you had to put it in a category, it'd be personal growth, personal development book, because it, it has our process in it. Now, when I say our process, that's a key word there because I had had people say, you know, we've had uh, some challenges. We've had some hard stories in our life. Uh, we lost our son to addiction five years ago. Um, we've just had, you know, some things that have happened and people will be like, but, you know, you've overcome some things. You've done some changes. You've learned not to live with your hair on fire, to live from rest, not rush, all those things you want to put that in a book? And I'm like, mm, maybe, but I didn't have a reason and a purpose. And then in 2020, um, we all did the, you know, COVID change, whatever that was for your business, <laughs> right. right? Depending on if you were in corporate or you were a solopreneur, entrepreneur, you had to make some type of decision about how your business was going to move forward. And I was doing a little bit of group community things, but I was starting to have people say, really like your content, really like your process, really like your worksheets, like the language that you're doing. Could I use this too? I'm like, hmm. So 
you know, what does this make possible? Here we are in COVID. I'm not out speaking. I'm not doing some of the things I wanted to do and felt like my business was growing into. So I thought maybe this is the time. So I created a beta group of about eight people just to see how it would work. And we began certifying people to use our intellectual property, our content, our worksheets, our things. As that program started to grow, I knew that writing a book would be another way to put the content into another form. We talk about it on our podcast, the Real Life Process podcast. I was working with my clients individually. Now I had other people using the content in the work they were doing as a coach, an entrepreneur, consultant, all the different ways. Because it's just a framework. It's not like the only thing. A lot of people like you bring it alongside work they're already doing. So when I knew that that was, I'm like, this has a bigger purpose than just my story. Mm -hmm. Now it is a framework that can be in written form that a client can read or anybody can read and apply to their life. But it also gives our certified facilitators a tool they can use. And to be honest, validation of the brand and the process. Um, so, so that's really the backstory of what's the why behind the book. It's just another way of saying, here's a way to develop yourself personally. And now it's in a written form with people, certified facilitators or ourselves, myself that can support you in doing that work. If you need that kind of support. And what's amazing about it is somebody can walk through it themselves because there's a book that walks you through the process. Mm -hmm. There's also references to ways that you can have somebody walk through it with you. Yes. It's, it's a, it's a great tool on so many different levels from that standpoint. I think too, as an author or anyone that creates content, you have to look at that. Like, how do you like to do things? I love to do things in community. That's probably something you and I have deeply in common. I'd say so. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We both are community people or at least a team or a collaborator or those types of things. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's why you and Jeff do this show together. Like That's right. So I know that I'm a collaborator and I learn I'm also a verbal processor. And so to be able to put it into a written content, but yet feel like it also belong to the business as a whole and to the brand as a whole. Um, and it really does put our stake in the ground. So anytime you do a show like this, you write a book, you do anything, you're kind of putting your stake into ground and go, this is my message. This is what I want to say to the world. I want to say to the world, do the things that matter around the areas that matter in your life and do it from a place where it's internal to external, living from rest, not rush, not everybody else gets to say what's going on in my life. And then I'll kind of try to operate under that operating system. I'm a computer programmer at heart. That was my very first thing out of high school was a degree in computer programming. And so I think that's why I always go, Rhonda just learned something new. Do you see I did. Learn? I'm like, I never heard that oh. one before. Okay. Well, I have a degree in computer programming, a uh, two year junior college degree back oh, when yeah. the computer was as big as our houses, like yeah. literally now we carry it on our phone. But I think that's why I see things in systems and processes is like, okay, if I can systematize and have some framework and some boundaries around my life, now I feel much more at peace with every decision that comes in in a day, I can very quickly say, yep, that fits or no, that does not. And that ability to, again, pre-decide from that place keeps the fatigue of all the inputs, you know, again, computer inputs, input, 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 all the notifications, all the things to go, you know what? I don't need to take care of that right now. That email can be put aside or it can go to the trash or, you know, that lunch appointment isn't probably, it's not a right now. I don't need to do that. Maybe that invitation will come back around later, but right now I'm focusing on these things in the next 90 days. I'm hanging out with these people. I'm doing this work, but that doesn't mean never it just means not yet. Right. Not right now. Exactly. 
Exactly. So Teresa, you have used the term living from rest, not rush Mm -hmm. a lot of times. It is Mm -hmm. the, um, it is the subtitle of your book. Mm -hmm. And I'd love you to dig in a little bit more into what it means when you say live from rest, not rush, that is so countercultural. It I mean, is. Like, oh, <laughs> talk about turning things upside down. That's yep. really, that's really Absolutely. turning it upside down. So talk more about sure. what that means and why we should think about this. Well, I think it, you know, and you've heard me say a few times too, it's internal, not external. So if I'm living kind of from a place of rush, how would I define that? So I'll give a quick definition of living in the unhealthy side, the rush. Usually, and we'll use the R-E-S-T. Usually if I'm living in an unhealthy side, my relationships are unhealthy. So that's the R. My relationships are unhealthy. My connection to all three centers of my intelligence are not firing. So the head, the heart, the body. I'm not living full circle energy. That's the E. I'm just living from a drivenness or I'm just living from a, you know, procrastination space. There's a way, there's a way you can live from checking in with all three head, heart, body. So that's full circle energy. If I'm living unhealthy, I don't know how to slow down. So that's, you know, I don't, I don't know how to slow down Uh, the sped upness, the addiction kind of to the endorphins that say more, more, more. And then the last one is I don't know how to use my time purposefully. So it was interesting when I looked up the word rest, the definition is like cease from work in the dictionary. I'm like, that is not helpful. (laughs) It's not helpful for me to define what rest is because that means Go take a two-week vacation, work like crazy two weeks before you go, and work like crazy two weeks when you get back. I am not rested. And for many of us in the business space, we're not even able to shut it off while we're on that vacation. Vacations are great. We should all take them. But how could we measure living from rest differently? Well, if I have healthy relationships, that's going to make me feel better internally. If I am checking in with all three centers, that's the E, full circle energy, I'm going to feel better from here. If I know how to intentionally slow down, meaning take vacations, take one day off a week um, in some type of day of rest, I know how to renew myself with hobbies and, you know, things that I like to do and things that are different, what I do in my workspace. That's intentional slowing. And then I know how to purposefully put my calendar and my time together, which to be honest, is the real life process. It is the four components of the process. So R-E-S-T, healthy relationships, full circle energy, intentional slowing, purposeful time. That's how I know in a measurable way, and I can check in with myself. When my hair starts to be on fire, I can go, okay, which one of these isn't working? Oh. Mm, I got a relationship with a coworker that feels a little out of whack, or my spouse and I are a little off base, or, you know, my in-laws or one of my adult children, whatever it is, like I can immediately go, that's why I feel rushed, sped up, endorphins on high. Oh, I'm not checking in head, heart, and gut. Oh, I haven't taken a day off in six weeks. I don't know how to slow down. Oh, you know, I'm not living from a place of my time is purposeful. What I say yes and no to, I love having things that I can measure. I love having a framework. So living from rest, not rush is attainable. If we look at it through a lens of how do I check in with myself to say, yep, yep. I'm, I'm doing well. All four of these things are at 80 to 90%. We're never going to be at a hundred, but if they get below, (laughs) that scale. Ooh, I need to think about this and I need to check in and take a little pause because I'm, I'm getting my hair on fire. So that's how I describe rest to rush. I, that's a, that is a fabulous way to describe it. That's really helpful. Um, I think one of the first things that somebody has to do as I was listening to you describe what it looks like to live in rush. And I mean, there's a lot of people who 
either can relate to that or they know what that felt like Mm pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. And then during the pandemic, for one reason or another, they had the ability to step back and say, yes, oh my gosh, there's another way. Yes. I don't have to be in that rush mode. That was the, the gift of COVID to many of us. Absolutely. What we and- have to be careful of, right, is do we want to go back to all of that? And I'm not going to lie to anyone and say, is it easy? Is it easy to work on your relationships? And I think this is some of the things we don't talk about probably in the workspace is if things aren't well in a person's whole self, they're not able to show up at work and give you all that they can give into your team. So if they've got some unhealthy things going on, and I relate back when our son was walking in addiction, do you think it didn't affect the way I showed up at work? Absolutely. So helping your people, your team, if you're a leader, if you have a team of people, you know, helping them be able to, it's not your responsibility to do it for them, but giving them the space to process it and to even say it out loud, hey, I've got some stuff going on at home, or I've got some stuff going on, like I'm caring for an aging parent. That's why I need some extra time off. That's developing healthy relationships on your team. And so there's so much of this you can do within your teams and within your workspace as well. Some people are solopreneurs, some are entrepreneurs, but some are working, you know, in a team, in a team setting. And this sounds like, what does this have to do with planning? This is the core of who your people are. Absolutely. And they're coming out of this COVID thing and coming back going, hmm, I'd like it to be more like that, but you're asking me to come right back into the way it used to be. How could we do what matters and really create a culture that lives from a place of rest, not rush? And as a leader, you're the one who sets that tone. You are. As as the business owner, you set the tone for this. So the first thing in my opinion that they have to do Mm -hmm. is give themselves permission Yep. to allow themselves to live from rest, not rush, because quite frankly, you're a better business owner if you do that. Right. Create your own framework, create your own work, do your own work um, to live into a process yourself because you can't teach or lead or model something that you're not doing. And that's what so many leaders make the mistake of doing. They come in and say, you know, okay, guys, this is what we're going to do now. And They haven't even practiced it themselves. So give yourself three to six months to say, how do I want to live? What do I want to do? Then you can let that trickle down because they're going to see the difference and you can let that trickle down into your team. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Teresa, it has been awesome. This, this, um, time just flew by and I'm, it does. (laughs) Yeah, it does. I think how that works, isn't it? And um, for people who want to get in touch with you, where can they find you? Well, if they're looking to pick up the book right now, the best place they can go is do what matters book.com. And that will get you to a page on the website that will let you pre order the book. Comes out in eight days. Is that right? Eight days. Yeah. Eight days. Woo-hoo! But if you pre order it or buy the Kindle version, Uh, You can go back and put in your registration and you'll get pre-order bonuses. So we're giving away a lot of bonuses, some workbooks, some videos, some different things, group coaching calls if you want to explore more. Or you can always just go to therealliveprocess.com, which is our website. Uh, You'll see Rhonda on there on the facilitator page. And so I would say too, you can reach out to Rhonda. She knows all the bells and whistles and all the things of a kind of a different way of planning. Um, that's more in a personal holistic self than just around the framework of business planning. So uh, yeah, that's why we interrupted the call to say, (laughs) Oh, there's a couple of options that you can do, but yeah, realliveprocess.com or do what matters book.com. Awesome. Well, Teresa, it's been great talking with you today about the book, about the process and about living from rest, not rush, because I mean, all of us are looking for that. The question is, are you willing to do what it takes to get there? Yes. Thank you, friend. So much fun.
Have a great day.